Hello everyone, I'm Fahim, lead software engineer at Epscot. In the latest release of KubeDB, we have added the support of MongoDB version 6. In this webinar, I'm going to show how to provision and manage MongoDB version 6 with KubeDB. So these are the contents of our today's webinar. First, I will talk about the MongoDB version 6 highlights. Then I will show a live demo where I will show how to provision a MongoDB 6.0 replica set. Then I will show how to backup and restore the database when uh, some operations such as horizontal and vertical scaling, reconfiguring the custom configuration, reconfiguring TLS, and <clears throat> and also uh, volume expansion, expansion, et cetera. Finally, we'll end our webinar with a QA session. So let's see the MongoDB 6.0 highlights. So from this version, the Mongo CLI is removed. Previously, it was de deprecated in uh, the version five. In the, for, from the, this the new version, the Mongo CLI has been removed from the uh, shell. Mongo CLI is uh, replaced uh, by new CLI MongoDB shell, also called Mongosh. In this new CLI, there is some new features such as syntax highlighting, command history, logging. Also, some legacy methods are now unavailable or replaced by new methods. So you have to make sure if you are using those legacy methods and you have to replace with uh, the new ones. Also, shard balancing policy, policy is changed. Uh, now, shard uh, balancer chunks are now called as range and uh, the balancer distribute ranges of data rather than chunks. The move chunk command is now renamed to move range. Also, the enable sharding command is now is not required for uh, sharding the database. Previously, it was required if you want to shard a specific database, you had to uh, use this enable sharding command to uh, shard the database. But from this new version, by default, the sharding is enabled for all the databases. If you want to learn more about this really uh, MongoDB 6.0 release, you can follow this release note via this link. So if you want to try this new MongoDB version 6, you have to install our new latest KubeDB release, uh, the April 10 release. You can use these commands to install the new KubeDB version. So now let's jump into the demo. So before jumping into the demo, let's show you my environment first. I'm using a Linode Kubernetes cluster with version 1.25.6. Also, I have this Helm charts installed. Linode cluster is a bit, bit slow. That's why it's taking some time. Okay, Helm command is not returning the results. Let me show you from the ports. I have the kubedb operators installed here. Uh, there are some operators for uh, the provisioner of manager and our auto scaler, schema manager, etc. Also, I have the Prometheus, Prometheus installed for monitoring. 
the panopticon is also for monitoring and uh, the start manager is for the managing the tls of the database so it will issue the certificates for our database okay that's all oh, okay the helm command is uh, now return results so as you can see there are these charts installed prometheus panopticon and cube cube matrix these three charts are for monitoring and cube db charts the chart is for the provisioning and managing our mongodb version 6 chart manager is for the uh, tls management and the stash chart is for the backup and restore of the database okay now let's uh, jump into our demo so this is the mongodb yml that i'm going to deploy as you can see i am using the version as 6.0.5 this is the latest supported version by kubedb this is also the latest supported version by mongodb2 also we are using uh, ssl for our database that's why we are providing some ssl information here uh, the ssl mode is required ssl also we are providing issuer reference it is a SART manager crd if i show you the yml it's this yml the issuer it will issue the uh, uh, certificates for us. We are telling this issuer that uh, uh, we have provided a CA via this uh, secret name. So this issuer will uh, sign the certificates using this uh, CA. I have already applied this uh, in my cluster. Let me show you the secret. As you can see, there it's, uh, con it contains a TLS certificate and TLS key. Uh, both are for the CA certificate. So both are the CA certificate and CA key. So this secret uh, refers to our CA and uh, the issuer will use this CA to sign our certificates for the database. So we have provided this uh, issuer reference here. Also, we are providing that the replica set name as replica set. And uh, here we are uh, telling that uh, we want three replicas <clears throat> for our replica set. So there will be one primary and two secondary. Here we are telling that uh, we want uh, 100 millicore CPU and uh, 512 megabyte of memory. So we are providing the resources in the port template section. Also, we want a custom configuration for our database. We are, will provide it via the mongodb.conf. Here, as you can see, the mongodb.com contains max incoming connection as uh, 50,000. So I have already applied this uh, secret, if I show you. As you can see, the custom config uh, secret contains the net uh, max incoming connection as 50,000. Then we are telling that uh, we want 10 GB of storage for each of our replica. Also, we are enabling monitoring for our database. So we are setting the Prometheus monitoring for the database. So I already applied the issuer. So let's check the issuer. As you can see, the Ishwar is ready to sign our certificate as it shows true. So now let's deploy our database. I'm showing the MongoDB database here watching and uh, the ports will appear here. Let's apply. So my MongoDB YML is now applied. As you can see here, the MongoDB with version 6.0.5 is now in provisioning state. And also you can see one port come up here. So as you can see, uh, the, uh, the first port is now in pending state. So here I'm also watching the role for our database. The role means a level in our port. Uh, which actually determine uh, shows the 
primary or standby status of the pot. So when this pot comes up uh, successfully, you can see that uh, the role changed. Also, you can see there are three containers in our pot. The first container is for the MongoDB, main MongoDB container. And the second one is for uh, a replication mode detector, which is the, which actually determines the role. So that container checks each of the uh, pot and uh, determines the role of that pot, such as primary or secondary. Then it uh, writes the role as uh, the primary or secondary and we will be able to see if this pod is primary or secondary and so on. As you can see, as the pod status changed to running, the role is changed to primary. So that means our replication mode detector uh, changed this role level as primary. So that's why it's, an, it's now showing as primary. If we exec into that pod, we will see that this pod is actually the primary of this replica set. Also, there is another container, as you can see, there are three containers. The other container is for the monitoring of the database. It will, it collects the metrics for the database. So now the second uh, container is now in uh, init phase. When it uh, goes into running phase, we will be able to see that the role changes to a standby. So let's wait for the port to go into running state. As we have uh, enabled TLS for our database, we can actually check the certificates for our database in the meantime. So these are the start manager certificates uh, object. As you can see, there are three certificates. The first one is for the client connection. The second one is for the matrix exporter, the uh, third container that is used here. And the final one, the server cert is for the server communication between the nodes. So let's see one of the content of the certificate. So these are the content of the certificate. As you can see, the issuer is showed here. Also the subject is uh, provided as uh, client kubedb. As you can see, the second part is now in running phase and uh, the role is changed to standby. Also the third part is now coming up. It will also uh, assume the role standby. Our uh, port, uh, MongoDB status is, uh, is still showing provisioning. When all of the ports are ready and uh, the, our health checker succeeds, this uh, MongoDB status will go to ready state. So we can see that the final port is now in running state and it is also assumed the role standby. So uh, the MongoDB, will, uh, our operator will now perform health checks on this port and uh, change the status as ready. As you can see, the status is now changed to ready. So we have successfully deployed our database. Now, as we have uh, enabled monitoring for our database. Now let's see the dashboard for this database. So as we are using Grafana, let's uh, port forward the Grafana port. We port forward it, it into the 3000 port. Now let's uh, check this. Let's see the last five minutes. As you can see, the our database is now in ready state. This is the summary dashboard of the of of kubedb. 
uh, as you can see the database status here, the database uptime, CPU limit and codes. These are the summation of all the replica. So as we have 100 millicore for each of the replica. So in total, we have 300 uh, millicore for each of the, uh, for total of the MongoDB. And we have three nodes here. Also the version is 6.0.5. These informations are coming from the database YML, which is uh, supported by the Panopticon, uh, Panopticon pack that we have developed. With the Panopticon, we can actually show the YML information in the uh, Grafana dashboard. As you can see, uh, there are other information such as memory uses, memory quota, disk read, write, etc. You can monitor your databases from this uh, dashboard. Also, we have a uh, pod statuses here and uh, replica set status here here we you can see the upload get more time different upload informations also you can see in the pod information such as number of connections card source queued operation documents etc so we have these three dashboards which you can use to monitor your database Now let's exec into the database and see, uh, perform some operations. We are now connected to the Mongo, Mongo shell. Now, if we run the Mongo command, we can see that the Mongo command is not found because this is removed from version six. So we have to use the Mongosh command. So if we try to connect using this command, we have provided the username and password. If we try to connect, we can see that we cannot connect because this database has TLS enabled. So we have to provide the TLS options too. So if we provide the TLS options, such as TLS file, which uh, resides in this path, and the TLS certificate key file. So this is the client certificate file and this is the CA file. With this, we should be able to connect. As you can see, we are now connected to the primary of the replica set. We can see the primary levels here. Now let's see the status of the replica set. As you can see in the members section, there are three members in our replica set. Uh, the first one is uh, labeled as primary and the other two is secondary. Also, we can see that the uh, <clears throat> also we can see other information such as uptime uptime of this uh, replica set. Now let's uh, check the data we have provided through the custom configuration, uh, the max incoming connection. Let's see if it is reflected into our database. So if, if we run the command db.admin command, get cmd line ops. So as you can see, the max incoming connection is showing as 50,000. Also, you can verify it from the, the mongod.com file. If we exit from the shell and get this file, As you can see, the mongodb.conf five contains the mass incoming condition as 50,000. So let's connect to the 
MongoDB shell again and uh, insert some data. So let's connect to the test database. We are already on the test database. Now let's insert some data into a collection called KubeDB. So we have inserted one document in our KubeDB collection. Let's insert some more documents in the database. So as you can see, we have inserted six data, sorry, five data. We can count the data using the count document method. As you can see, there are five document in our uh, KubeDB collection. Also, if we want to see all the documents, we can use the find command. As you can see, there are now five documents in our KubeDB collection. We'll back up this data and restore later. Also, we can verify after each operation if our data exists in our database. Okay, now let's go to the our uh, backup. We'll backup now and restore at the end of our session. So for backing up the database, we are going to use stash. Stash has some CRD for backup and restore. The first concept is the repository. This is the repository CRD. Here we are providing in the S3 section that we are going to use a Linode S3 bucket. And in the bucket name, we are providing the name of the bucket in a region. And in the prefix, we are providing that in this bucket, we want to store our data in this path. Also, we are providing a storage secret name. It contains the all the information to connect to this, this uh, S3 bucket. So after applying this repository, we will need uh, another CRD called backup configuration. This actually takes the backup. We provide a schedule here, the, it is a cron schedule. Then we provide the uh, reference of our repository they have, that we have created earlier. Then in the target section, we provide the name of our database. And in the retention policy, we have provided that we want to keep the last five backup. <clears throat> so let's apply this. Before applying this, let's check our bucket if there is any data or not. Okay, as you can see, the MD test uh, bucket uh, doesn't show any data, the folder is empty. So now let's apply the repository. So we have applied the repository. Let's check the repository. So as you can see, our repository is now applied successfully. So after a successful backup, we will be able to see the size, snapshot count, and last successful backup of this uh, uh, of this repository. Now let's apply the backup configuration. So we've applied the backup configuration. So as you can see, the backup configuration is ready. If we want to trigger a backup now, we can trigger it by using uh, stash CLI. So we have triggered a backup. If we watch the backup here, when you trigger the backup using the stash CLI, it created a CRD called backup session. This actually takes the backup. Usually when you, uh, the schedule matches, uh, it automatically creates a backup configuration. But uh, as we have uh, limited time, we are manually triggering the backup. As you can see, the backup is now succeeded. So we should be able to see it in our uh, leader to S3 bucket, some data. Let's refresh this page. As you can see, we have uh, data in our repository. 
also if we check the repository we can see that uh, <clears throat> it says it has uh, five kilobyte of data one snapshot and the last snapshot successful backup was 51 second ago so we have successfully taken the backup of our database we'll restore this data at the end of our session so now let's uh, jump into our next section which is the day two operations such as horizontal scaling vertical scaling etc so this is the yml of a, a horizontal scaling database a horizontal scaling ops request the mongodb ops request uh, crd is used for different kind of operations so the first one is the horizontal scaling so here we are providing the type as horizontal scaling in the database reference section we are providing the name of our database and finally we want four replicas of our database uh, currently we have three so we are providing uh, horizontal scaling replicas as four so now let's uh, apply this yml and see what happens Let's watch the MongoDB Ops request here. So as you can see, the horizontal scaling Ops request is now in progressing state. Also, you can see that another new pod is added into our database. It should be also in a standby row. <coughs> After it is the uh, ads uh, uh, goes into running state successfully, we will be able to check from our uh, uh, primary that uh, if it's added successfully or not. So now it's in pod initializing state. Finally, it will go into the running state. Let's wait for it that. So our uh, pod is now in running state. Also our database is ready. Also you can see that the MongoDB of secret is successful. Let's uh, connect to our database primary. We are now connected to the primary of the database. Now let's run replicated status. As you can see, there are now four members, one, two, three, and then finally four. Uh, the three of them are secondary and the first one is primary. So we have successfully scaled up our database. Now for some reason, you, if you want to scale down your database, you can apply the same YML with just uh, changing the replicas as three that will uh, scale down your database. So let's apply that too. We have applied the MongoDB obstacle horizontal scaling down. It's now in progressing state. And uh, the fourth port is gone. So it successfully scaled down. As you can see from here, the, it's showing successful. If we connect to our database again, we should be able to see from the members list that there's only three replicas. So as you can see, there are now one, two, and three replica in our database. The first one is primary and the other are secondary. So we have successfully scaled down our database. So now let's uh, jump into our next ops request, which is called vertical scaling. So to uh, vertical scaling means we want to scale the memory and CPU of our database. So for this, we need uh, 
uh, type vertical and scaling in the database reference section. We are providing our database name, same as previous. And in the vertical scaling section, we are providing the request and limits for our database. We know that our current uh, uh, resource and limits, uh, let's check that. So we are checking our MongoDB replica set uh, using JSON path, the resources. So as you can see, the request is 100 millicore and uh, 512 megabyte of memory. And uh, the limit is uh, 512 megabyte of memory. But we want to make it one GB of memory and uh, 300 millicore of CPU. And, uh, and the limit as uh, two gigabyte of memory. So let's apply that. So we have applied our vertical and scaling ops request. As you can see, it's now showing in progressing state. So what will happen now, the operator will now restart all the standby for port first with the new request and limits. And uh, finally, it will restart the primary port to reflect the new request and limit. So our operator is currently restarting the first standby port, which is this one. While this is happening, you can see that our database is showing critical state. So what does critical mean? Critical means uh, you can actually connect to the database and uh, you can actually run operations. But uh, at least one of your of your pod is not in running state. So as you can see, this pod is currently restarting. That's why our database is showing critical. But uh, if we cannot uh, connect to the database or we cannot run operations in the database, our database will show as not ready. So as you can see, while vertical scaling ops request is running, the database is showing critical state. That means while you run this ops request, you can still continue to reuse your database. Also, you will not lose your data. So the standby report is still restarting. It's stuck in its phase. Let's wait for it to go into running state. So our standby port is now in port initializing phase. After it runs the init scripts, it will go into running phase. So let's wait for it to run the init scripts. So as you can see, it uh, went into running phase. So it should be already updated. Let's check the resources uh, for the that part. So we have already restarted the first uh, estimate part, which is means the number one part. As you can see, the request. Uh, let me show the whole resource. 
okay as you can see the limit is now 2 gb and uh, the memory is 1 gb and the cpu is 300 millicores so we have successfully uh, vertically scaled our uh, scale this port as you can see the last port is also scaled uh, so let's check the resources of that port too So it's also scaled. <clears throat> Finally, the, our operator is uh, starting the first port, which was previously the primary. The second port is now elected as a new primary when this port was restarted. So after this port goes into running state, our op request should be successful and uh, the our database will be in ready state. Let's wait for that. So we can see that the vertical scaling obstacle is successful. Also the far, also the database is in ready state. If we check the resources of our first part, we can see that uh, the resources are scaled, uh, vertical scale successfully. Okay, now let's go into the next ops request, which is the reconfigure ops request. So as we have now 50,000 maximum incoming connection as we have provided via the MongoDB con. But if we want to change that value, uh, that means we want to update the uh, value, we can uh, use the reconfigure ops request. Here we are providing the type is configure in the database reference, we are providing the database name. And in the configuration section, we are providing as, uh, the max incoming connection as 30,000. Let's apply this YML. So we have applied the reconfigure ops request, which is now in progressing state. Similarly as before, it will restart all the port with the uh, with the new configuration. So first is now similarly as before, it's restarting the uh, first standby port. Then it will restart the uh, this uh, second standby port. Finally, it will restart the primary. When it restarts the primary, a new primary will be elected. Let's wait for the first port to come back. It should assume the role standby because it was previously as a standby. So our first port is now in running state. As you can see, the last port is now restarting, which was previously a standby port. Let's wait for it to restart.
So our my pod is now in running state. So the previous primary is now restarting and new primary is selected. So the, our first pod is now the new primary. So when this part comes back, uh, we, it will assume the role standby and we will be able to confirm from the uh, shell that uh, this uh, the new configuration is applied successfully. So let's wait for our ops request to be successful. As you can see, our ops query, configure ops request is successful. Also, database shows ready. Let's exec into the database. Let's check the max incoming connection from the CMD line ops. As you can see, it is updated to 30,000. So we have successfully reconfigured our database. So now let's go to the next ops request, which is volume expansion. Currently, we have 10 gigabit of data. We want to make it 20 gigabit. So we need a new ops request called volume expansion. Similarly, as before, we are providing the database reference here. And we, are, we have two more. One is online and another is offline. In online mode, you the pod won't restart, but in offline mode, the pod will uh, restart. Uh, if your storage class supports or online mode, uh, that means uh, the pod doesn't have to be restarted to expand the volume. You can use the online mode, but if it doesn't uh, support that, you have to use offline. I'm showing the offline mode here. So if we watch the PVC. As you can see, the PVC shows 10 gigabyte for each of the uh, replica. So now we want to make it 20 GB for each of them. So let's apply the ops request. So we have applied the volume expansion ops request. As you can see here, it's now in progressing state. It will restart the standby node first. And uh, after restarting each of the node, it will uh, expand the volume. So as you can see, the second pod is now restarting. When it restarts, you will be able to see that the second uh, PVC got the capacity 20 gigabyte. As you can see, the second pod is, uh, PVC has now 20 gigabyte capacity. And our port is also restarting.
So our second part is started successfully. And you can see the third part is uh, starting now. Also, the PVC is now showing 20 gigabyte of capacity. Let's wait for it to be in running state. And finally, our primary will be restarted with 20 GB of capacity. <clears throat> So it's restarted successfully. Now the previous primary is restarting. Also new election happened and uh, the new primary is the second pot. The first pot will join as the standby. Let's see. Okay, we can see that all of them are now 20 gigabyte. So we have successfully uh, <clears throat> increase the capacity to 20 GB for all of our uh, ports. Now let's see if, uh, if the volume expansion ops request goes to successful state. Let's wait a bit for the first port to come back online. So our first port is now in running state. Let's wait for the obstacles to be successful. So as you can see, it's now successful. We have successfully expanded our database to 20 GB. Let's check the data that we have inserted before. <clears throat> Let's check the data from QDB collection. Okay, as this is not a primary instance, so we cannot run this command. We can run this command using the secondary okay command. Okay, as you can see, we can 
see that the, all the data is here that we have inserted before. Now, as we are at the end of our session, uh, I will now delete this database and restore it from our Let me copy the command. So we are connected to our primary. Now let's drop the database. So we have successfully dropped the database. Now let's take the database. So as you can see, there is no database called test. So now let's uh, restore the data from our S3 bucket. So we have to use a uh, CRD called restore session. Here we are saying that the repository is the repository where we have uh, stored our data and uh, we are providing that our target is our database as our database name. And we want the latest snapshot to be restored. So let's apply the restore session. Before that was the restore session here. So the restore session is applied. You can see there is running. Also, you can see that the status is data restoring. As soon as the phase is succeeded, you can see that the database went to ready state from data restoring. If we exec into the database again to check the data, the data should, uh, data should be restored. First, let's check the database. As you can see, there is a there are Test database is here again. Now let's uh, check the collections. As you can see, the collection is also restored. Now let's check the actual documents from the QDB collection. As you can see, all the documents is restored successfully. So we have uh, successfully provisioned, backup, restored, and uh, run some day to operation using uh, kubedb uh, for the database uh, mongodb version 6.0.5 so that's all from my session if you have any question you can ask in the zoom chat or you can get back to us uh, in the, the email or in our twitter we'll be able to answer your question thank you